when I'm not trying to add just a little bit of class to this channel. He likes to answer your questions. I just don't, I don't know where to like s sit. <laughs> Like what's like this just No that one stays there. There you go. Let's get to it. Who was your guitar hero when you first started playing guitar? Ooh. Do you wanna take this one first? Sure. Um I honestly I really think it was Jack Black initially, like in the School of Rock. Really? Yeah, initially. Oh School of Rock. School I was of Rock, I, like I the thought movie. I initially went to the D. <laughs> and I was like, What? That's so cool. No. School of Rock. But, okay. Um, Still then, acceptable. Very acceptable. Yeah. Awesome movie. But mm -hmm. then I think more so like on the acoustic side, like Michelle Branch. Okay. Yeah. How about you? So is Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix was the reason for all of this. Okay. Someone did like a class project about Jimi Hendrix when I was like a senior in high school. And I was like, this is an interesting dude. And I bought a Jimi Hendrix CD from the Best Buy. And I got a guitar. Nice. That, but still, Hendrix is not the most accessible guitar player when you're first starting out. Huh? Yeah. But uh, Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith. I've said it many times on this channel. Elliot Smith was the man. Most of what I know about guitar, I kind of started with the, the basic building blocks of Elliot Smith. Very cool. So Elliot Smith, Jimi Hendrix, Jack Black, and Michelle Branch. The core four. The Mount, the Mount Rushmore of guitar players, really. Ooh, yeah. Nice analogy. Mm-hmm. King Gizzard is very popular these days. Why am I more inspired on acoustic than electric? Do you have any students like that? I think that most of my students actually are probably acoustic students. And as far as, I don't think that's unusual, really. No. I, it's, it's a different type of inspiration. It really is. And I feel like acoustic is more accessible though. There's less stuff you have to worry about. Yeah. It's easier, like, it's a little bit of a process, mm -hmm. especially if you have, like, a massive pedal board like I'm currently dealing with right now. Like, there's no way, like, look at that crap over there. Like, there's no way I'm gonna... There's probably about, like, 10 pedals on that board right and now. And it's not very tidy over there. Oh, oh, board. I could, I could do that if you, I could, I could... You don't, no, don't touch the pedal I'll board, please. No, them. please don't. Just like the pedal Honestly, boards. pedal boards are kind of like... Like, the dude, The dude's couches. Yeah. It's almost like the, the man's way to fight back is the pedal board. You know, like... Don't touch the pedal board. I swear to God, if you touch that pedal board, no. That's... Anyways... I like how to watch out for you now. That's weird. Right, so, stop looking at it. Electric, I get inspired in a different way than with acoustic. Acoustic is... I feel it's more organic. Mm -hmm. I feel more one yeah. with the acoustic guitar, if I'm inspired. I totally feel that. Because you can kind of feel the, the, the resonant top. You can feel it. Then you really can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, electric is just a different thing. I think electric has more options to be inspired, especially when you get mm -hmm. into effects. I do remember when I first got my multi-effects pedal, mm -hmm. which was like a RP50 Digitech. A lot of people had that. That that opened it up for me. I think I'd been playing for maybe six months. I got a multi-effects pedal, and I was like, this is awesome. And I would just mess around with like these like really awful sounding effects. That's awesome. So I was inspired in a different way with that. So yeah, not unusual. I would say... 70-30 is the split between my students who go acoustic, electric. Whatever whatever inspires you, my man. Keep doing your thing. Where were you after one year of playing the guitar? Two, three, five, ten. And where do you commonly see people at these skill levels, assuming they commit to regular, near, daily practice? Ooh. Fantastic question. That's a great question. Kind of hard to answer for me personally. After one year, I thought I was awesome at guitar. After 10 years, I realized I suck at guitar. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how your perspective changes. After, after one year, at, at, about at the end of my first year, I got into Zeppelin mm -hmm. and that was like, all right. Like I'm like playing like cool stuff. Yeah. I played Stairway to Heaven, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal at all. <laughs> the difference between one and two years for me was not that big. I don't know, what about you? Like. I don't think I had really a big difference in that time span either because now when I think back to it, I think I just kept playing a lot of the same things mm -hmm. and it wasn't until like later on that I realized, oh my gosh, I should like try other stuff. I yeah, should no, really like sense. try to open myself up a little bit more because I would start playing around with other guitarists and I would see what they would do and I'm like, oh my gosh, 
And it just, it blows your mind. I don't, I think playing with other guitarists really is huge. Just like, Depending on, it doesn't matter what stage you're in. Yeah. Skill wise. I think it just like opens up your world. For sure. Yeah. Because you're just exposed to so many different genres. Exactly. Honestly. Like, and just styles of playing. I think, I think that's it. It's less about how long you've been playing and more about like when you get into certain styles. Yeah. Like for me, again, I... I made a good amount of progress from in my first year and then I kind of plateaued and I didn't really get a lot better until maybe like my fourth year. Mm -hmm. That's when I started doing a little bit more finger style yeah. stuff on acoustic and I was less just about trying to like play Tool songs and Zeppelin songs, which again was like my, ma my main thing the first four years, which I was still getting better, you know, but I was just kind of, I was making like smaller leaps within the same rock genre thing. Gotcha. And then I was like, all right, I'm gonna kind of like, play a little bit more finger style stuff. Mm -hmm. So after four years, I kind of started doing that a little bit. And then that helped my electric guitar playing too. But then it wasn't really probably until maybe playing for, for 10 years, honestly, that I felt confident enough where I was like able to write my own stuff that I thought was interesting. And I mm -hmm. feel like I started finding my own voice. Oh, that's great. And that, and that I, to me, that is like, the biggest thing that you can do as a player. And that's hard. Where it's, it's not a, an easy thing for a lot of people. Yeah, and, and, that, and honestly, finding your own voice as a guitar player ha doesn't have a lot to do with how skilled you are. Mm -hmm. Like, you can find your, like, hopefully, you can find your voice as a player, and it doesn't have to be, like, advanced stuff. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of players who are, like, incredibly advanced players, but even they'll admit that they don't have, like, a voice. Yeah. And that, like, they couldn't maybe tell they're playing from somebody else's, if you can hear mm -hmm. it. Like, I know for... Like, I'm pretty confident that I can tell my playing from somebody else's playing. Whether that's good or not, I'm not saying it's, like, good. But you but can like, recognize it. Exactly. Like, yeah. I feel like it's me. And it wasn't. And it really wasn't until, like, 10 years of playing that I yeah. felt like I was able to do that. And what really helped me was understanding music theory kind of completely, which I didn't really do for my, the first, like, decade I no. played guitar. I definitely didn't start off with music theory at all. Yeah, and not a lot of people do, I think. They no. just kind of, like, learn stuff that they like to play, yeah. which I think is a, that's, that's the way to learn. If that gets you like started. Yeah. You, you, know? you play the stuff that, uh, you know, your motivates you. Yeah. Your idols play the people you look up yeah. to the stuff that is in your taste musically. Mm -hmm. And that's why I also think too, the better you get at a certain instrument, uh, your, your musical taste changes. Mm -hmm. Like there's stuff I listen to now that I wouldn't have liked five years ago, yeah. but it's only because I kind of have Same. an appreciation for maybe some of the instruments that uh, my listening experiences have changed too. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say like, oh, this is where you should be at at five years, at 10 years. But hopefully somewhere along the way, you find a voice and you find what you kind of want to incorporate in your playing, what you want your playing to be. Yeah, I so agree. That's that. The pentatonic is bad, huh? Tell that to Eddie Van or Eric Johnson. I can't take your advice seriously when you're playing an acoustic guitar. Oh, that was intense. You like spit right on your iPad. I get a little carried away when I read the Salty Blues. I comments. know it's like my favorite part. Of the Usually, day. it's a very personal moment for me. Yeah. So for you to witness that, I think you were the, you're the first person to live see a Salty Blues read. Really? Quite an honor. I you've been bestowed feel upon. honored. And Can under these circumstances right here. I like it. I'm still not prepared for how this video is going to turn out because I can't really see myself in it, but I have a good idea. It's going to be great. You know, all right, I hate, the, I hate the pillows. I'm I'm not against the throw. The throw seems like it could... He likes it. The th I he said I'm it. not against the, th the pillows. No, you said you like it. As soon it. as you leave, these pillows are gone. But the, th the throw might... I approve. The throw might stay. I approve. Just feel free to ask. We're I talking approve. about Salty Blues comments. I have uh, proof. Where's proof my proof? Of what? You don't know. You don't need to bring that up right now. Anyways, what do you mean you're not gonna take me seriously because I play an acoustic <laughs> guitar? That's stupid. And Eddie Van? Who shortens Van Halen's name to Eddie Van? It's freaking salty blues guys. Why don't you have a Patreon page that all of your amazing followers can support you on? It's an interesting question. Yeah, I'd like to know the answer to that. I'm sure they would like to know the answer to that too. So I vowed in an earlier QA that you will never see me with Patreon. Mm -hmm. I just, I think it's a, it's a different look. First of all, so she's got a Patreon page, which you should totally pledge to because it totally works for you. It's awesome. 
Thank you. I, you know, for, for me and for what I do, like it would be cool to make money. Don't get me wrong. Like I make like no money, but, but I'll have, I'll have stuff. I'll, I'll find, I'll figure out a way to monetize the channel without going Patreon. I feel like you would really love having that extra like creator, like hub community sort of platform. I feel like you'd really like it because you get even closer with people that are really, really, really excited and passionate about. I, I get that. All right. Here's the, the thing that I do like about Patreon is yeah. that you can like set those like tiers yeah. of rewards mm -hmm. and like a cool reward would be like, if you're like a gold member, mm -hmm. I could maybe give you like a nightly good night call or something. Or maybe like read poetry over the phone to like oh. a subscriber. Something like that, that would be that, kind that's, of intimate. Yeah, well, that it, that yeah. would be. I I don't think I'm I gonna think do they Patreon. Would like that. I don't think I'm gonna do Patreon. But if I did, I think that intimacy would be the because I already upload every day. Yeah. It's not like there's gonna be more content on the Patreon channel. And also too, I think like some other guitar channels, they have like you get the tabs of yeah. of lessons like with you, right? Yeah. You like add chord charts and tabs for like yeah. the Patreon stuff. I hate tabbing things out. I passionately hate tabbing things out. I don't know if I can do it. So I I don't know. I mean what do you what do you all think? Should I have a Patreon? I mean, you could really customize it. You don't have to do chord charts and tabs and things like that. So just like the nightly good night messages? If like if if both parties agree to that, I mean Well that would be a tier. On, they have polls on there. You can like pull things out. Well I can do that on YouTube I mean, now. Yeah, there's I don't know. I don't think she's gonna convince me of the Patreon thing. I mean it would be it would be interesting. Cheddar. Stay Convince tuned. Him. Stay tuned. Hey, on. I'm going to speak to the people in the audience. Cheddar, I know you are hardcore, Sean Daniel. How, how dare you You're single out a golden <laughs> sub of mine? Because he's so dedicated, and I think that is amazing. And I appreciate seeing your comments every single day under Sean's videos. And I, uh, hey, and I, it's amazing. First so of all, I think because you are so supportive of him, I could definitely see you wanting to support him further. On Patreon. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just trying no. to. You I can't believe you're trying here. to steal my. I know. I know this trick. You're trying to steal cheddar. I'm trying to steal calling cheddar. Calling out, calling out my subs' names on the QA. Aren't you so proud of me that like I know your subs' names? Ken yeah. is okay. Ken is not okay. See, Ken, you're mangling. But you're mangling he is around. okay now. See, here's the thing. I. Again, I love those subs. They're golden <laughs> subs. Yeah. That's my new term for that, golden subs. golden subs. I have many subs. I can't pick one sub over another. But you know who you like the most. You know? No, there's many of them. There's I, I can't even start mentioning them. No. Because I'll leave somebody out. But the golden subs know who they are, and I love you all. One of the best lick lessons yet, Sean. A question for the QA. What was your fountain of knowledge where you learned what you know of music theory, or were there multiple sources? I still don't know what I'm doing with these. Just, no, don't leave, leave that one there, okay? Really and then this me. one, just keep it on your lap and be comfortable with it. I'm like having anxiety with these decorative pillows. Why? It's like how Indiana Jones hates snakes. Yeah. I, that's how I feel with decorative yeah. pillows. I, I don't it's like It's like against snakes, my but, core existence. Well, because snakes are scary. Decorative pillows are comforting and you can, you know. Music theory. So uh, I didn't know anything about music theory and any uh, resource I checked just confused me further, which is why it's kind of like a mission statement of mine to teach music theory because I had such a hard time having it explained to me ever. Mm -hmm. There were two books. There's, a, there's like the Berkeley Music Theory Class 1 and Class 2, which were a little bit helpful, but honestly, that was it. Really, almost everything that I know music theory wise just came from starting to be thoughtful about chord progressions and kind of seeing how they worked. Even like other musicians I talked to, I never really had like an aha moment mm -hmm. of knowledge. It's just picking up little things here and there. And then I think one day it comes together. Like my aha moment was like, like by myself, like, oh my gosh, like this is how chords from the major scale are, are built. And that's stuff like amazing. That. Yeah. Cause my aha moment was when you just, kind of explained everything to me and wrote it all out. Oh, that was uh, Yeah, I learned basic music theory when I took choir, but none of my guitar teachers ever taught me any music theory. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I lacked that backbone. And so then when I met you and you started talking to me about music theory and just really opened my eyes to it and just made it click for me because 
it can seem very intimidating, but you showed me that it's just patterns. That's all it is. It's, it's, it. patterns. it's patterns. It's numbers. Yeah. Which is confusing at first because thinking of letters and numbers as being the same thing and having them kind of like move around is, is weird. So first. you're my fountain of knowledge wow. for music theory. I am honored. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you're you welcome. so much. Very and nice. And I hope to be your fountain as well. All right, for listening homework this week, thrown it to my guys Wolfpack. I think I'm saying that right. I think it's a soft V, V U L F B C. Wolfpack. Wolf Wolfpack is more fun to say, but I think it's Wolfpack. Wolf. Sometimes I try to like go half and half, like half V, half F. Wolf. Wolf. Wolfpack. Wolfpack is awesome. They're nasty. Basically, they're really just a nasty band, whole thing. I, it's, it's almost hard for me to pick the proper one. I'm not going to throw you to Back Pocket. Not a fan of Back Pocket. But I will throw you to Wait for the Moment, which I think is like the tastiest R&B groove this side of the Jackson 5. So check that out. Thank you, Guitar Goddess, for being on this QA. Thank you for having me and for allowing me to... The second the second you leave, these pillows are going to be gone. No, by the they're going to stay here. How, how could you possibly make a claim such as that? Like, there's no way. Um, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, the website, my Patreon page. <laughs> Not. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot. Oh, look at you, throwing the <laughs> deuce. Good job, wow. Oh, nice try. We have a pillow fight on camera now? Yes. As I just like, I like mercilessly just start like pummeling you. I don't think these are pillow fight ready. They're not. I feel like you're gonna break a guitar. I know, that's why I was careful. Hold on, let me just be careful. Oh! <laughs> this is great. I tried in the pillow. In the throw. See, this is, this I, is, I can get down with this. This is what the subs want to see. Give the people what they want. <laughs> Finishing oh my <laughs> God.